Omar? Yes. What's up, Omar Figueroa? What's up, man? Man, I'm 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 so glad and honored for you to come on our show tonight, man. It's blessed to have you on, man. How you been? I've been good. Just <clears throat> you know, enjoying my family, enjoying my kids, and uh, getting ready for the next one. I hear that, man. So so, what's the latest, man? You've been a little quiet lately, you know. What I mean, I haven't heard from you heard anything or any rumors about you in the latest man what i know you said you've been um with been with your family and everything but what's the latest um with you with your boxing career i don't know i talked to <clears throat> talked to mr Heyman. uh you know as soon as i got done with my fight and uh we pretty much we didn't discuss much he just told me to heal up and be ready for the next one and you know i've just been waiting and last I heard, I think he, we were looking at maybe sometime in May. Not exactly sure when, but uh, sometime in May, hopefully, or May or after. Oh, okay. Are, are you still staying at 154? I mean, not 150, 140? Well, that's the plan. Um, I honestly think I can still make 140. Uh, well, I know I can make 140. But, you know, uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's up to... Uh, up to my team and to see what everybody thinks and we gotta we gotta you know come to a final decision on what's gonna happen but i think i'm i'm comfortable at 140. Oh, okay because because it's like man i there's a lot of dream matches man i i've been wanting to see you at 140 man it's like like i've been a fan fan of yours for years man um you dominated the lightweight division man so impressive. I love the fight with you and Ricky Burns. I, I really love the majority of all your fights, man. You give it all you've got. You know and I mean? I respect what you do in the ring, man. Um, Thank you. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to ask you. I wanted to ask you. I saw you one time. Um, I saw that you said when the first PBC matchup was made, and I think Adrian Broner against Molina. And you said, um, when Adrian Broner said African, Mexican, you, um, I don't want to misquote you, but you said, at least he said something, at least he said Mexican, so at least I can get it, or some, something like that. I don't know if you remember saying that. Yeah, I said something along those lines. And I mean, you know, when it comes to, to stepping in the ring, I'm not afraid of get in there with anybody you know that's what I've been trying my whole life to do I go in there and I face the best and I don't care you know I go in there and give my all and as long as I know I tried my best I did my best and you know that's fine with me right man I, I just would love a fight with you and Adrian Broner man I feel like everything you do would give can be like um um, you can give Broner problems. Can um, your style, the way you fight, um, will give um, Broner. You can beat Broner with your style. It's like a great fight, man. I would love to see you and Adrian Broner. So, because I want you to be, I want you to be in the spotlight, just like Adrian Broner, like the Keith Thurmans and all these other guys, man. I feel like if you fought somebody like towards Adrian Broner. I think you would get. I think you would get the respect that you deserve. Well, what you think about that? Well, like I said, I fight because I enjoy fighting. The yeah. the fans are either gonna hate me or love me, regardless of what I do. And uh, you know, this is what I love to do. So I love being in there and fighting the best. So if if that's the one that that Heyman wants me to fight or my team wants me to fight then that's who I'm going to fight. And no if, and, or buts about it. Right, right. Definitely, man. So how, how's, um, how's uh, him been treating you since you brought him up earlier? It's been good. I mean, he's always treated me well. Uh, ever since I signed with him, uh, when I first signed, since I first signed with Golden Boy. And, uh, you know, one thing that I've always had a lot of respect for Mr. Heyman <clears throat> And, uh, you know, I appreciate everything he does for, for us as fighters, not just myself. 
but all the fighters. And not only, you know, he even goes beyond that and does stuff for the fans of boxing. You know, now boxing is free. And uh, I think, you know, everybody can appreciate that where you're not getting charged 100 bucks to watch, you know, a boring fight. You know, at least, you know, so at least now they're free. You don't hear people complaining about how expensive it is to watch, you know, to watch a fight or to, to try and enjoy boxing. Now boxing's available for all. For free. Right. Yeah, definitely, man. Um, I always, I always wanted to know, man. How much does a fighter has control of his career? Does a fighter have control of their career, or the promoter really um has control, or your team? I, I I'm not too sure on that, cause a lot of people have different stories on that scenario. Yeah. Well. I guess the the fighter let's, let's has speak as much for your perspective. Yeah. Well, you know, in my case, I can have as much control as I want, mm-hmm. but my job as a fighter is to be prepared for the fight and put on a good show. That's what I get paid to do. I don't get paid to manage myself. I don't get paid to promote to you know to hype myself up. I do my talking in the ring. I do my talking right. with my hands like when I step in the ring. You know, uh, it's Heyman's job, my dad's job. It used to be, you know, Golden Boy's job to find me the fight and, and put my name out there and, you know, take care of all that stuff for me. I don't get paid to do any of that. I get paid to fight. So I stick to that. Okay. Um... You, do you think we can get to see you, like, a little bit more active um, this year? Um, like, three fights this year? Because I know usually you um, lately you've been fighting t- twice a year, so... Um, yeah, you think we can get a three in? I've tried. I try my best. I try to keep my body healthy. I try to, you know, to... to because even I want to be more active. It's frustrating to only be able to fight twice a year. And I say only be able to because my body, you know, injuries and whatnot, that's what's, I guess, forbidding me from being more active. And, I mean, there's no one that gets more frustrated than I do because I have a good thing going. I'm, like, training. I'm going good. Everything's going good. And then, boom, I get injured. And what do I have to do? You know, I can't work out anymore. I, you know, I'm in pain or whatever. And like, I, it's frustrating because I get paid to fight. And if I don't fight, I don't get paid. Like, and I have to feed my family. I have kids, you know? So it's frustrating. But we're trying our best to, to stay healthy. That's, I guess, that's our main priority. And, you know, but even at that, shit, shit happens. Yeah, since you brought up an injury, I know I noticed that you got injured last year. Can you tell me about um, how, what was the injury and where did you injure yourself and how how is the process it now? Are you 100 percent and everything? Well, for the burn fight, I fractured my hand. Uh, you know, the first my first freaking sparring session of the camp. I fractured my right hand, so for the rest of camp, you know, I don't, I don't like to cancel fights because I give, you know, especially if I give Hayden my word or I give my fans my word and I, you know, I sign a fight, uh, I hate canceling, I hate backing out, so I went through with it. You know, I had my hand in the cast for seven of the eight weeks of training, and uh, I just, I just was in shape in other ways, and... You know, I try to put on a good show for the fans. Right, definitely, man. Um, I wanted to know your opinion, man. Um, besides yourself, um, who who do you think is like the best guys or the best guy at one forty? Um, if you know of, um, if you watch any of one of them. Well, I don't, I don't know. Uh, honestly, like who exactly is in the division? Can, but, I, uh, can, can I bring some some names to you and and you tell me what you think of them and who you think yeah, is the best? Yeah, go for it. All right, um, let me get to the list. This is the pound for pound list I'm going to read. Um, you got Victor Postal, 
Terrence Crawford, Ruslan Bukonikov, Adrian Brona, Mauricio Herrera, um, Edward Chavosky, and Adrian Granados. Those are all um, the only, people. Everybody I only know else. Two of those. They, I only know two of those names, which okay. is uh, Adrian Broner and Mauricio Herrera. But the only reason I know because of Mauricio Herrera is because I actually sparred him when I was training in India with Joel. Oh, how did that spar him went? Good. That's pretty oh. good. He's a crafty guy, but I mean, you know, with sparring, it's a lot different when you're sparring than when you sit in the ring. Oh, okay. So I can't, I can't base anything off of, you know, our sparring sessions. In a quarter mile. So you, you never, um, you never heard of Ruslan, the guy who dropped Bradley twice, who gave oh, Bradley no, the no, fight. Never mind. Yeah, Ruslan. I know Ruslan okay. too. Never mind. Yeah, he's oh. a, he, he's a strong guy. I think he's okay. good. I don't think he's the best at 140, not even close. But I okay. think he'd, he'd be a, you know, I think he's a stiff challenge for anybody. Right. <laughs> and you, you have, and you haven't seen Crawford, Terrence Crawford. Yes, I've seen Crawford too. Well, actually, no, I haven't seen Crawford. I've heard he's good. Okay. I, you know, but I haven't actually seen him. And Victor Posto is a guy who be. Um, Lucas Matisse last year um, and took his WBC 140 belt. Yeah, I don't know who that is. Oh, okay. Um, um, and Granados was the guy who beat Amer Mom. I don't know if you ever heard of Amer Mom. No. Well, I I think I heard when he when he fought. Uh. Never mind. I don't know. Never. I I'm confusing all the names. I I really don't know. <laughs> uh, okay. Man, cause um, I, I, cause the, I, I wanted to, I wanted to see how you. So I guess you don't think really highly of the 140 division at least, then, cause you don't really well, know no, these guys. It's not that. It's just I don't watch boxing or keep up with it at all. You know. Oh, okay. Uh, I barely even I barely even study my opponents when I, whenever I have a fight coming up. Uh, oh, okay. But <clears throat> you know, it's just like I said. I, I guess I don't keep up because I don't really care who I'm facing. I, I I'll go I'll get whoever it is. I don't I don't. Uh, that's just my mentality when it comes to boxing. You know, my team is the one that is that takes care of that part of of my career. So I let them do their business. I trust them. You know, I trust that they're looking out for my best interest and that they'll make good good uh, decisions. Well, you know, me and my um, my co-host, we you know, since um the 147 and the 154 was doing a tournament for us us as fans, we was um we was thinking about a 140 tournament, right? And we were saying, yeah. all right, these are the two matchups for HBO side and Showtime PBC side, right? And we had um, Crawford versus Postal. He's um, covers his WBO and Postal is the WBC. Herrero versus Chavosky, who is the IBF champion. And I want and two matchups. I thought of since um, you against Granados, because he's in the top ten pound for pound, or Brona and Ruslan. That was the Showtime tournament. You know what I mean? And I was like, man, these are so so much great fights, man. But yeah, you know I mean, but I would love to see you against um, Adrian Brona and um, Adrian Granados, man. But you don't even know Granados. But um, as a fan, at least, um, I, I wanted to. Um, so, so what made you? Um, Stop um, watching boxing um, as much, man. You you, um, you got tired of it as a fan. Well, no, I don't think I've ever been. A, I don't think I ever gave myself the opportunity. You know, I've been training and fighting since I was six years old. So, you know, in the beginning, my dad forced me to do it, and it was something that I was forced to do. <clears throat> and since I was a competitor, I you know I took it to heart, and it just. 
I have to be the best at everything I do. So I obsessed over it for a long time, and I just I just got tired of boxing like as a whole. Uh, but of course, I wasn't I was never able to leave it. So I just try to stay away from boxing as much as I can when I when I'm able to, because when I'm training or when I'm you know when I'm preparing for a fight, that's all it's about. It's all about boxing, and it's it's boxing over everything. And you know it's just it's just very it consumes you if you let it. And I don't want I don't want that to happen. That's why I try to you know be I guess. I try to find my my balance. I try to balance it out. I try to you know live a normal, you know, young adulthood, adulthood, and uh, a normal you know boxer boxing life. So I try to I try to balance my life as much as possible, even though it's almost impossible to do it when you're in boxing because boxing is a very selfish sport. Right. So since you told um you said like your father kind of forced you. What made you ch- chose that as a career then? I was just so good at it, I guess, that I had no choice. And, okay. I mean, uh, the people that knew, well, because I played baseball my whole life too. So the people that knew me when it came to baseball, uh, and they knew both, they said that I was a way better baseball player than I am boxer. And, uh, you know, the people that liked boxing more, they were like, no, you're a way better boxer than you are a baseball player or whatever. So it was like, it was half and half. But when it came down to it, you know, my high school baseball team, you know, I don't want to be too harsh on them, but we sucked, like, bad. And it was mainly because they didn't put in the work to make themselves better. They didn't care about winning they didn't care, you know, they didn't feel embarrassed when we got our asses kicked 20 some to to three or 20 some to two. And it's something that I've always hated. I hate losing. Right. You know, so I, I chose boxing because in boxing, it all comes down to me and the work that I did. You know, it's my own conscience, my own work that's going to either lead me to succeed or lead me to lose. And I and like I said, I, I hated depending on my team when it was when I was in baseball because I I practiced hard, I cared about the game, you know, and yeah. I, I would I was a pitcher, I was a pitcher, so I would get on the mound and I would throw my arm out pretty much every single game, and uh, you know we'd still get our asses kicked, and it was something that you know that made me realize that boxing was the way to go because like I said, I don't I don't depend on anyone else, it's all me. If I didn't train. I'm the one that's going to get tired, and I'm the one that's going to get my ass kicked. And if I trained really hard, I did what I was supposed to do, and I dedicated myself, then I'd come out victorious. So I think that's way better to me, at least, than relying on other people whom you don't know if they're screwing around or they're actually trying or whatever, you know? They might not care about it the same way that you do. So that's how I ended up in boxing. Okay. (laughs) That is... So you was a great, so you was a great baseball player then. Would you uh, say that? I wouldn't say I was great, but I mean I was, I was good. Oh, okay, not as great as you are in boxing, huh? I guess. Well, I don't know. You know, like I had, um, I had Attention. several scouts from the, you know, several college scouts and even the pros. One of one times, I think the the Met scouts. We're down, you know, in the, we're down here in the valley, and uh, <clears throat> one of my coaches was was close to them, and my coach told me that, you know, that they really liked me and that whatever. But like I said, I, I had other plans. I was, I had, I had boxing in mind, and that's what I wanted to do. Mm. So, it, um, what are the outside of things you you would like to do besides boxing? Well, I guess my main part, what I like to do is just help people, you know, help the less fortunate because, or at least try to provide them with the same opportunities that I was provided because I had, I had my parents back me up as much as, you know, as much as possible. And I'd just like to provide that for other people too, whether, regardless if it's just monetary or, or however, but, you know, I want people to know that, that it is possible. And I just, I guess like being, you know, a role model, a positive role model for these 
younger kids that are growing up in the same situation that I grew up in, thinking that that it's lost. You know, I just I'm proof that it can be done. Man, that's awesome, man. That's awesome, man. I hope you get to accomplish all of those things, man. Um, I I wanted to ask you, man. Um, can you can you explain a little bit what happened? What happened in um training camp in your last fight with um Demarco? Yeah, I can. Well, I can pretty much give you the gist of it, but uh, I can't really, I guess, say what happened. But training camp went great. Everything went great. Everything went, you know, everything went according to plan. Everything was going smoothly. It wasn't training camp that screwed it up. It was, it was just the last week. It was the weight cutting week that something went wrong, and it was just, you know, it was out of our control. We, we had, we couldn't do anything. Like I, like I, you know, said before, all we could do was try and stop the bleeding as much as possible. But I was just, you know, I was just glad I made it. I was able to even make it to the fight. Right. Uh, man, I just, I, I, I feel, man, I, I, I feel like you should be like on top of the scales, like a lot of these guys, man. Um, who, what you, what's your, what's your analyzation on Broner, man? Um, do you think he's a good fighter? I think he's all right. I mean, I honestly don't see anything special. Okay. <clears throat> I don't see anything special aside from his mouth and, you know, the his, his uh, I guess, shit-talking ab- ability. But other than that, I don't, you know, I don't think he's he's anything special when it comes to boxing itself. So, um, if, I don't, I, I don't know if you ever want, wanted anybody, but if you, if you could choose or you, um, Somebody who could bring you to the higher, to a higher level in boxing, man. Um, do you have an opponent that that could make you reach the plateau you want to be, or a fighter that you would really want to go against? Honestly, I don't even think it's about any other fighter. I think it's just if things fall into place for me, if my body allows me to, if I'm healthy, I think I could I could reach that regardless of who I fight. Okay. But you know these these last two fights against uh, <clears throat> what's his name Demarco, DeMarco and, and Ricky uh, Burns. Burns, you know they haven't really allowed me to to fully fight. Like I said, for the Burns fight, I I did I did no boxing training. My hand was in a cast for seven of the eight weeks of training, so I didn't take off the cast till you know the week before the fight. Wow. So I couldn't I didn't get anything done. You know, like I wow. said. I was and that was like a fight that. of the year. Yeah, it was all right. No, nah, I don't know. I, I ain't going to lie, man. I love that fight. That fight, y'all was going at it. Um, I know you probably could have did way much better since you're telling me about your arm and your hand and everything. But I, I, I enjoyed every morning of it. But I'm glad you, you enjoyed it. Um, you know, since, I, since you don't watch boxing as you as um as I do, um a lot of boxing fights ain't been like competitive or it's been more one sided, you know, so seeing that fight was very it was very competitive. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I enjoyed it as a fan. And then uh, um, what was your what was your toughest challenge in your pro career? I think my toughest challenge has been, you know, myself, just keeping myself uh healthy and keeping myself dedicated and you know, I've been doing this for twenty years, man. I started when I was six years old. I've been doing this for twenty years, so mentally sometimes I feel like, you know, I just need a break, like I need to take it easy and whatever, but I'm just trying my best, man. I'm trying my best to to just keep myself at the highest level, uh, to keep myself mentally right, physically right. And I just want to be able to fight, you know, and not worry about injuries, not worry about anything, not get sick, not, you know, have any problems during camp. But I know that that's 
part of it. That's part of the game. And it's something that I have to live with. And, uh, you know, like I said, I'm just glad that I I have that that fight in me that I won't lose. I can't lose. I won't let myself lose. So I don't care what I have to do, but I'm going to come out with the W. Mm. I hear that, man. So what, 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 what makes you stay dedicated? Because it's... Since you, you know, I know it exhausts you sometimes. Like, I always want to know, because I did boxing in, um, for a while, but it was it, it's very hard to stay dedicated like you guys, man. I've been doing it for way more than me. I did it for uh, four years. You guys did it for 20. So it's like, wow, man, like, to stay dedicated, work hard, um, working seven days a week, going run work, going in the gym, than doing weight, uh, weight lift, muscle. Yes, yeah, it's, it's like a lot of work, man. I, I always commend you guys for staying dedicated, man. Yeah, that's why you know that's why when it comes to boxing, I don't talk, I don't talk smack about anyone. I don't talk bad about anyone, just because I know what it takes and I know how hard it is, and I know that e- even just to make it to the fight, it's it's almost a miracle, you know, because there's so many things that could go wrong. You know, you could step in a pothole and break your ankle and you could slip and fall and, and hurt your hand or, you know, there's so many things that can go wrong. Uh, but at the same time, there are so many things that have to go right in order for us to be able to make it to a fight. So that's why I have the utmost, the utmost respect for every fighter that steps in the ring. And, uh, you know, I'm just grateful for, for being able to, you know, get in there myself. You know, I'm glad that that I'm healthy enough to be in there regardless of what happens during camp. If I had a fractured hand or if I get sick or whatever happens, you know, making it to the ring is just a, an amazing feat in itself because it's tough, man. Right. Uh, I, I, I can bet it is, man. I am bet it is. Yo, I noticed, yo, um, me and my co-hosts, man, we were, we're talking now. We was like, why is Omar Figueroa not in the pound for pound in the 140 division? You know what I mean? And I was like, it's surprising. It's, it's names that are on the pound for pound, and we haven't never seen them ever fight in America before, never heard of them. They never fought on TV. And I'm like, who is these guys? And I'm like, Omar Figueroa deserves to be on the pound for pound. And... I looked on um, ESPN. I looked on um, Ring Magazine. Uh, I I couldn't find your name on there. I was very surprised, man. How do you feel about that, man? Or do you feel any kind of way? You don't even no, care. No, like I said, I don't care. It's it that doesn't define the fighter that I am. That doesn't define me as a person, you know. Either, um, you know, as long as fans like you and fans along the uh, around the world know that I belong on there, that's really, that's, you know, by what you're telling me, that's enough for me. Right. You know, I don't need the gratification of the of the media. I don't need the gratification of anybody. I just need to, I just want to keep winning. Uh, like, I want to keep, you know, being successful and, and keep making money because, you know, at the end of the day, that's what we, that's what we're in here for. That's what, that's why we put ourselves through hell so we can, you know, make a, a good living off of this sport. And, I, you know, like I said, that's all that matters. I'm able to feed my family. I'm able, I'm able to feed my kids. And uh, <clears throat> that's, you know, at the end of the day, that's what really matters. Yeah, man. That's up, that's that's man. That's what's up for you saying that, man. It's surprising because a lot of people look for um, gratifications from the media and they want, like, um, they want to have these, um, writers pick them, put their name in, and they feel very disrespectful, man. You being humble and not really caring, man. That's 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 how great you are, man. Well, like I said, you know, as long as the true boxing fans know whether they they they're hating or the whatever, but as long as you know people like you know people that really appreciate the sport. Uh, and you appreciate what I do as a fighter when I get in there and I put it, you know, I give my all and I put it all on the line, you know, as long as you guys appreciate it and and, and y'all give me that gratitude, then, you know, that's enough for me and that's enough for me to keep working hard and keep doing what I do. 
Mm. Um, since you said you're not as a fan of boxing, uh, did you did you ever had a favorite fighter or? No, not really. I just I do remember liking uh, Marco Marco Antonio Barrera a lot after he beat uh, Prince Nassim Hamed. Yeah, Ever yeah. Since then, I re I really really liked him just because you know he was a Mexican and he shut him up and he not only that but he embarrassed him so that's why he became one of my favorite fighters. That see 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 now since you bring in that up that's why I really want to see you and Adrian Broner because that's that's how a fight. That's how, like, Prince Tassim and Barrera would have been, you know what I mean? A great matchup, yeah. two guys on the top. Yeah, but see, that should have happened before uh, Maidana whooped his ass and embarrassed him. But it's too mm. late now. He already got his ass kicked. He was already embarrassed. So I, it's too late for me to do that. Mm. But you know you know what's so crazy? Um, he's, he's a super um, WBA champion now at 140. Yeah, but like I said, you know, belts don't define me either, and I don't, I don't think belts define a fighter. You know, it's who you beat, how you beat them, that really, you know, makes a difference. So I don't even care. I didn't care when I won my belt. I didn't care about losing it. <clears throat> it's just, you know, just I just want to fight. That's it. Definitely, man. Man, definitely, man. That's wow. That's crazy, man. Um. So, so we guess I guess we will be seeing you sometime this summer, right? Hopefully, yes. Hopefully, if uh, if my body permits, if my health permits, then I should, you know, I like I said, I do want to be more active, and I'm just hoping my body, you know, backs me up. Well, I hope your body um, backs it up and everything. You're healthy. You're 100 percent because um, I, I don't want to see you. Um, unprepared, like you said, you were in the Ricky Burns fight. I would love to see you 100%, so you can um, feel proud of what you've done and everything, man. But I, I like I said, man, um, I hopefully see you this summer, man. And against uh, Adrian Granados, man, um, I think you guys would bring a war. You don't know him, but um, I was talking to a lot of b boxing journalists and writers. Um, the guys on Showtime, the analysts, commentators, um, they love the fight. Um, Steve Kim, boxing scene, those guys, they all love the fight, man. Um, and he's in like like you said, you don't really care for the pound for pound, but he is in the pound for pound. Um, or a guy like Rona, man. Um, hopefully we can see that as a fan. If not, hopefully we just see you against anybody because we're gonna watch it anyway. Um. Yeah. But um um there's anything um um anything new you want to share with the fans, man? No, nah, man, everything's been, you know, pretty steady over here at home. Uh, I've been training, you know, getting ready and uh I just, you know, as always, you know, I want to thank the fans, I want to thank you guys uh for supporting me and backing me up and believing in me, which, you know, which is really what matters. And uh, just know that I always give my all. You know, I try my very best to, to go up there, to go up uh, on the ring and put on a great show. And, I mean, you can tell from my last fight, regardless of what happened with the weight, you know, like I said, that was out of my control. But you could tell that I was really in shape, that I trained hard because I went in there. I don't even know how the fuck I did it, but I threw almost 1,100 punches. I was surprised. Right. But, you know, like I said, it's what I do. It's what I like to do. So, you always oh, yeah. throw a lot of punches. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. even the Ricky Burns fight, when you say you just got your hand out the cast, like, you threw, I don't even know how many punches that fight. You know what I mean? Yeah. It shows how great you are. Like, um, even your injuries don't stop you from being, um, stop you from being great. So, imagine to see you at 100%, like, Wow. People yeah. got well, a rude awakening when they um come across a hundred percent Omar Figueroa. Well, I hope so, man. I hope so. I hope to one of these days actually say, you know, that I was as close to a hundred percent as I could possibly be, and not be plagued by by all these injuries and you know just obstacles. But hopefully, one of these days, man, it'll happen. Yeah, man, 
Definitely, man. Can you give out your social media where the fans can follow you and look out for the more any more news um, from Omar Figueroa? Man? Yeah, of course. And as soon as we have more, uh, more I guess up to date news, I'll, I'll let everyone know. I have uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook. You know, it's just my name, Omar Figueroa Jr. And you know, they keep it pretty simple. That's that's where they can find me. Okay, man. Um, thank you very much, man. It was definitely an honor having you on, man. I I'd love to um get you back on when, whenever you announce your flight or after your flight, man. It, it's it's definitely an honor, man. All right, man. Thank you. Appreciate it. Man, have a blessed night. Yes, sir. Likewise.